Hello, dear students. How are you doing? I'm very fine. Uh, today, we are going to start Unit 8, uh, which is about further on statistics. By the way, uh, this part is designed for social science students only. Uh, so, uh, in this chapter, we will try to see the following basic points. The first one is sampling techniques and the second representation of data and construction of graphs uh, and interpretation and we'll see measures of central tendency and measures of variability and analysis of frequency distributions and use of cumulative frequency curves. So uh, I hope for today uh, maybe we'll try to cover uh, these parts maybe to, to sampling technique representation of data uh, together with uh, construction of graphs and interpretation. So let's continue uh, from the first part uh, before directly going to sampling technique. Uh, let's see some terms here. Uh, the first term is statistics. Uh, I hope you know what statistics uh, uh, is and you have already you are familiar. Uh, you have learned in grade uh, 11. Uh, so statistics is a very useful uh, 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 a, a very useful tool uh, for making decisions and forecasting about the future. So it's a very important tool in making researches in every field, in every field. So it's a very important uh, topic. So let's continue. Uh, just let's see what uh, some term is. Uh, the first term here uh, is a population. Uh, I think you are familiar with this term. Uh, population, this is the complete collection of items under consideration as it's a population. Uh, for example, if you are studying about students in a certain school, all students are the population, okay? Uh, and sample, sample is, it is uh, a limited number of items taken from the population. So, for example, if you are studying about students in a certain school, it is difficult to just take census survey to take all or to study all the students. So in that case, you take a certain sample to study. So a part of it we call a sample. Uh, now, uh, so to study about the population, we need to take what? A sample. So in this chapter, we'll see how to take a sample, the techniques. Uh, so when you take a sample, when you take a sample, you have to consider the following basic thing. One is, uh, the sample size, the sample size, the sample size must be sufficient uh, that so that it represents the whole population. So uh, the sample size should be adequate. It should be adequate in order to represent the whole population, and and each item should have equal chance uh, to be a member of uh, a sample. Uh, so, uh, when you take sample, you have to consider these two basic things. Now, let's see the different techniques, uh, sampling techniques. Uh, sampling technique broadly grouped into two. The first one is random or probability sampling. The second one is non-random or uh, non-probability non sampling. So, in the case of uh, random sampling, in this method, each or every member of the population has what? Equal chance of being a member of the sample. So the three most commonly used uh, probability sampling are this one. The first one is simple random sampling. The second one, systematic sampling. The third one is stratified sampling. So. Let's see this uh, sampling techniques each one by one. Let's see simple random sampling. When you take a sample using this method, you can either use lottery method or table of random number. Lottery method means simply you just you prepare a slip of paper which are identical in size and color and you put names or give code numbers for each member of the population. And then you fold the slips and put them in a container 
and just after putting in the container, you mix them. After that, you will apply blind uh, selection, a blind selection. So this water lottery technique means. So in this way, you can take a sample. Now, the other way of applying simple random sampling is table of random number. Now let's see how to apply this table of random number. Look this one. Uh, let's just use, by the way, if you refer your textbook at the back of your textbook, uh, there is uh, a table of random number. So from that, I just simply select a certain part. A certain part, just I select this one. Now using this uh, table of random number, let's see how to select the sample. Now, using part of random number below, try to select three student sample out of 11 students. And random table is given here. So to apply a table of uh, random number first, you have to give a, a, a code or a number for each member of the population. We have 11 students. So the digit is two here. So each member of the population must be written in the form of digit two number. So if you arrange the students from one up to 11, the first member is written in this form. It must be in digit two since this, uh, the total number of students is 11. It's a two digit number. So each member should be written in two digit form. So the first member is zero one, second one, zero two, zero three, zero four, five, up to 11. These are the members of the population. So we are trying to select a sample from this applying a table of random number. So uh, arbitrarily, just simply I selected one part okay, from your text. So applying this table of random number, let's see how to select this sample. Now, just arrange two digit number here. The first two digit number here it is 0, 3. So is 0, 3 here? Yes, 0, 3 is here. Therefore, 0, 3 will be selected as sample. This student will be selected as sample 1. We are just uh, seeking three uh, samples, so let's continue. Uh, let's take this second digit number, it is 96. We, are, uh, we don't have 96 here. So we leave this one, and the next number is this, 27. 27 is also is not here. So next, 09. 09, yes, it is uh, here. So this 09 will be selected as sample. So here we have selected 03, 09. So we need one additional sample since we need three uh, samples. So uh, continue in the same way. So this part 92, 90 is not our uh, part of a sample. We leave that. 0, 09, even though 0, 09 is in part of our sample since already selected, we can just leave this one. Already we have selected this. So next 1, 7, 1, 7, there is no 1, 7 here. Next one is this 2, 2, 22, that's there is no 20 here. 80, there is no 80, 53, but we have 0, 2 here. Therefore, 0, 2 will be included in the sample. Therefore, the samples uh, selected using this table of random number are 0, 3, 0, sorry, 0, 3, 0, 9, and 0, 2. So we have selected these three samples. This is how to apply uh, a random table of random number. By the way, if uh, the digit is Three digit number, for example, if you are uh, selecting uh, a sample from 100 students, you need to code each member using three digit number. That means the first member will be 001, the second member will be 002, just you go until 100. So using this, you, sel you just you select uh, a sample using a table of random number. So this is, it. This is how to apply table of random number. Now let's proceed to the other part. Systematic sampling. Uh, in this method, in this method, we have to calculate a certain interval, a sampling interval, sampling interval, and uh, you choose one arbitrarily chosen sample. We will just starting uh, point or arbitrarily chosen sample. Uh, so, uh, for example, if we have n size of population, if you want to select n samples the sampling interval will be the ratio of population to the number of samples, that's n over n. 
So let's see how to apply this uh, sampling technique. Uh, suppose we have 80 students in a class uh, written uh, from 1 to 80. Uh, you need to select a sample of 10 students. We are just uh, want to select 10 students out of these 80 students using systematic sampling. So to apply this end, and you are given here uh, arbitrarily chosen sample is 5. So using this systematic sampling, try to list the other members of the sample. So we do like this. First, uh, you, you have to calculate the sampling interval. Sampling interval, as we just uh, listed the formula here, number of population divided by number of sample, 8 u over 10, that's 8. So uh, the starting point is given, the starting sample is given to be this 5, this is a member of sample, arbitrary chosen. To find the next sample, simply you add the sampling interval. So 5, you add the sampling interval 8 here, you get 13. 8, add 8, 21, add 8, 29, 37, 45, add 8, you get 53. When you add 8, you find 61. When you add 8, 69, add 8, you have 77. Until you get, you proceed this until you get uh, the sample to be 10. So let's count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, three, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have selected 10 samples. So this is how to apply a systematic sampling. Okay, now the other uh, way of selecting sample is stratified sampling. Uh, this is useful whenever the population under consideration has some categorical difference or stratum. In that case, uh, just you will divide the whole population into strata or different uh, similar groups. So after dividing into uh, strata, you select a sample from each strata by applying one of the techniques we just raised uh, previously, either systematic sampling, uh, lottery method, and so or table of random number. So this is it. Uh, for example, uh, let's take one example here. Uh, let's take uh, from Addis Ababa. Still, let's take Arakilo campus. Uh, from Arakilo campus, uh, we need to take a sample of uh, uh, students. So, to take a sample, uh, you have to divide this into homogeneous group or into strata. One group may be just using their department. You can just uh, will have. Uh, uh, different groups. So one group may be physics department, the other group may be chemistry, the other will be mathematics, computer science, geology, and so on. After dividing uh, the total uh, students into this uh, strata, you select sample uh, from each, uh, each uh, 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 classes. So uh, just applying uh, uh, a technique in this way, we call it, it is uh, taking a sample in a stratified uh, sampling technique, sorry. So uh, uh, the next part will be the different ways of representation of data. Uh, we can represent a given data in different ways. We can use a table method, tabular method. You can just describe a given data using table. You can use a simple bar chart. You can use uh, a component bar chart, Ma maybe multiple bar chart, line graph, pie chart, maybe histograms, frequency polygons, frequency curve, and cumulative frequency curve or ogive curve. We can use this uh, to represent a given data. So let's see this each one by one. Uh, OK. The first part is uh, representing a given data uh, in table form. Uh, let's assume this one. Let's assume this one. Present the following age of 10 students uh, in table form. The age of 10 students given here, you are asked to just write or describe this data in table form. 
So uh, let's arrange this uh, starting from the lowest to the biggest. The smallest age is 13 here, next to that 14, 15, 16, 17. So these are the ages uh, of the students. Uh, number of students whose age 13 is only one, H, number of students H whose age is 14 is two, and so on. So this is the way how to represent uh, a given data in tabular form. Now let's see the other form. The other form is simple bar chart. This bar chart, uh, uh, it is a type of bar that simply represents the frequencies of a single item without considering the component. Simply, it tells you the fre frequency of a single item without considering the component uh, part. Now let's see this uh, through, example, through example. Now, the following table depicts the types and the amount of pair of shoes produced by a certain factory for four consecutive years in thousand. So, here in 1991, the factory produced 3,000 boots and 7,000 normal shoes. And the total number of shoes produced is 10. So, to represent this uh, uh, data graphically, uh, the year and the total number of shoes produced, you can see like this. So, you put the year on the horizontal axis and the number of shoes produced in vertical axis. Uh, it is the uh, number of shoes uh, produced in thousand, by the way, this is in thousand. In thousand, the number of shoes produced in factory in thousand. So, uh, in 1990, in 1990, in 1990, the number of shoes produced is 10. So, you draw a bar chart up to this part, up to 10. Similarly, you can just do for the other parts in 1991. The total number of shoes produced 15. So you continue like this. So representing this data and this form, we call it just representing the data in simple bar chart form. Now let's see the other form. The other form is a component bar chart. Uh, a component bar chart takes uh, into account the relative contribution of each component. It, 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 it takes in consideration to the relative contribution of each component. So, uh, if you try to draw uh, uh, this component bar graph for a previous data, you'll have this one. Uh, in 1990, the number of shoes produced, you look at this one, in 1990, the number of boots produced 3,000, just three, and the number of normal shoes produced is seven. So, uh, therefore here you put the year and the frequency here. So in 1990, the number of boots, the number of boots produced here is it is, this part it is three, the height of boots, three. And the number of normal shoes produced here, just you put again on here, uh, it is seven, so three plus seven is 10, the height becomes up to 10. So this is a component bar chart. From this part chart, you can see the red part, the height of the red part is it is the normal, and the height of the blue part is it is uh, the, num uh, the shoes, the boots, number of boots. Therefore, from this, uh, this is three, and this one is seven. So, uh, using component bar graph, you can see the contribution of each. Okay, so. Uh, let's proceed to the other way of uh, describing a given data. The other way is it is multiple bar chart. Multiple bar chart. Uh, in this case, this chart shows the various components side by side, okay? It shows the various components side by side. For example, uh, in previous uh, example, we have just put the year on the orbital axis and the frequency or the production on a vertical axis. So, in 1990, the number of boots produced is, it is three, if you remember, the number of boots, it is three. The number of normal shoes produced, it is, 
seven number of uh, normal uh, shoes produces seven if you remember the data and this one is the total number so the total number of shoes produced is 10 so uh, you can represent uh, using this way so representing a data using, using this way we call it it is multiple bar chart by the way you can do the same for other parts so this uh, how to represent data uh, using multiple bar chart now let's continue the other part the other part is it is line graph a line graph is it is another useful way to represent data especially when the categories are represent time when the category represent time so let's see this example represent this data it's the following data represent the daily sales of a certain shop for six days so represent this data using line graph so days are given here six days from Monday to Saturday is listed here and the sales in hundreds of per is given so on Monday uh, the sales amount is 400 per on Tuesday 300 and so on so to represent this uh, using line graph just put days on horizontal axis and sales on a vertical axis and just put the scale we have from Monday to Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday here. And the volume of sales put here, just be careful while selecting uh, the scale. Uh, as you can see, the number of sales, the minimum number of sales is 2, the maximum is 8. So try to scale using this uh, number. So let's start from 0, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 up to 10. This is scale. So using this scale, let's try to draw the, the line graph on Monday the sales is 4 on Monday the sales is 4 you put this point on this day the sales is 3 3 is between 2 and 4 you love this one and Wednesday the sales is 6 it is the sales is 6 this part on Thursday the sales is 8 sales is 8 on Friday, sales is just two. On Friday, sales is just two. On uh, Saturday, Saturday, the sales is five between between six and four. So, after just putting these points, you connect uh, using a line. So the graph will be this. I uh, to love this form. This will be the line graph. So you can represent a given data using this line graph. Okay, now. The next part is it's a pie chart. A pie chart is it is a, a pictorial representation of data with several divisions into a circular region. So you love this one. You may have a certain data. So to represent that data using circle graph, uh, you have to maybe let's assume we have three datas to represent these three datas uh, in circular uh, region or into a pie chart what you do first is you have to convert each component into degree after converting degree uh, you divide uh, this into sectors using the degree you found here so after that, the, the circle graph will be drawn or the pie chart will be drawn. So uh, let's see example for this. Uh, the, the following data depicts uh, preferred means of transportation for 100 people. How 100 people prefer to go from one place to place. So uh, type of transportation may be taxi, bus, or a private uh, taxi. So uh, people who use taxi out of 100 people or out of 100 people uh, people who use a taxi certified the number of people uh, who used to travel uh, taxi is 35 the number of people who use bus 50 the number of people who use private uh, transportation is 15 so to draw a circle graph for this we have to convert each 
part into degree. So, to convert degree, this part is 35 out of what? The percentage of a taxi is, it is 35 out of 100 people. So, 35 out of 100 people take a contribution out of 360 degrees, circular region is 360 degrees, out of 360 degrees, 35 percent is this, 126. This is 35 percent. This is 35 percent. The number of uh, people who take a taxi is 35 percent. And the number of people who take a uh, bus, it is 50 percent. So 50 percent of 360 is yes, 180 degree. And uh, number of people who take a private car is yes, it is 15. So 50 out of 100, when you convert 50 over 115 into degree, it is 15 over 100 times the circular region 360 degree. So when you multiply this, we'll have 54 degree. After computing this, you have to divide this circular region into sectors. So the first part, 35%, that's 126 degree. So putting a point here at center and just simply uh, just drawing one uh, uh, segment here and using protractor, you can measure uh, 120 degree, you will have this one. This part is it's a number of people who take a taxi. Next to that, 15%, that is 180 degree. So you draw this part using uh, angle measuring instrument uh, protractor. You can measure this. So this will be 180 degree. And then the remaining part will be it is 54 degree. So uh, you can represent a given data using uh, a given data using pie chart like this. So this is how to represent the data using pie chart. <laughs>
to 159.5. So uh, for this part, its frequency is 7. So you draw this part. You continue like this for the second class. Second class from 159 to 179. So its frequency as it is 20. So just you draw a rectangular here. So you continue successfully like this. So this is how you represent a given data using histogram. Now, let's continue to the other form. The other form of describing or representing data is frequency polygon. This frequency polygon also represent group data. This also for group data. So uh, in this case, you plot the class markers. Look, in this case, you draw the class markers on horizontal axis, the class mark or the class midpoint, the class midpoint. You know how to find the class midpoint. I'll show you here. Uh, on, uh, so you put the class markers on horizontal axis and the corresponding frequencies on a vertical axis, the corresponding frequency on a vertical axis. After plotting the points, you connect using what? Using consecutive line segments, okay? Not smooth curve, you use consecutive line segments. So let's try to represent this uh, data into your frequency polygon. Uh, let's assume these are the marks of students. Uh, the number of students is, uh, who score mark from 15 to 23. And for the second part, number of students score a mark of 20 to 25 to 17, and so on. So these two are given. These two are given to draw a frequency polygon. First, you have to find the class midpoint, this one, the class midpoint. The class midpoint is obtained by simply adding the 20 divided by 2. 15 plus 20 divided by 2 will give you this 17.5. Similarly, you'll find for the other. So you put this mark on horizontal axis, 17.5, 20.5, 27.5, and so on. So uh, in addition to this, you need one class. Uh, uh, to the right and to the left, so to make a polygon, close the polygon, okay? So, uh, so we need to add 17.5, you add 5 here, you get 22.5. When you add 5, 27.5. So above this, you will have 12.5. Below this, you will have 37.5. Therefore, after that, we'll try to draw uh, the, the graph or the frequency polygon. So 17.5, the number of uh, students who score is 7.5, 3, so 3 is here. You put a point here for 22.5, for this number of students, 17 between these two, you'll put here for 27.5, so much, it's is 10, so 10 I think here, and for 32.5, it is how much? It is 5. So after uh, just put in these pointers, you connect these to these pointers by line segment, okay? Not a smooth curve. So you'll have this one, you connect like this, you connect this, you connect this. But this part, since it's not a part of our data, we so for the purpose of enclosing as a uh, class polygon, just we put uh, a dotted line, not only for the part, the other part also. So this how to represent a given data using frequency polygon. Now, the next one is this a frequency curve. Uh, frequency curve is, uh, it is similar to a frequency polygon. The difference is, in this case, you will not use line segment, simply you use a smooth curve, a smooth curve. So, for example, for this data, just you we have just put a, a, a class midpoint, like a frequency polygon, class midpoint, and the number of uh, workers here. So uh, for 149, we have here. So for 149.5, there are seven, maybe probably two, seven, maybe here. So uh, and so on. Using these pointers, using these pointers, you, you do not connect using a line segment. In this case, I said simply you use what a smooth curve, a smooth curve. So uh, you represent uh, a data uh, using fre frequency polygon like this. 
So uh, next to this, next to this, frequency curves, in frequency curves, in frequency curves, if the peak, if the peak is in the center, if the peak is in center like this, we call the distribution is symmetrical distribution. If the peak, look this one, the peak here it is to the left side. In that case, we say the distribution is positively skewed. And if the peak is to the right, in that case, we say uh, it has negatively a skewed distribution. So uh, I think it will be enough for today. I will see you on the next lecture. So until then, goodbye.